by our new f- joint family. As it's, it's Briggs, right? By Sister Briggs, the wife of the new founder drummer in the house. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Come on, sister. God bless. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to just go into a worship, if you don't mind. Um, can I have everyone standing on your feet? Hallelujah. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody's greater, nobody's greater, nobody's greater than you. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody's greater, nobody's greater, nobody's greater than you. We're gonna sing that one more time. Yeah, I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody's greater, nobody's greater, nobody's greater than you. Your 
righteous, righteous. Oh, you are righteous, 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 righteous. Oh, your name is above all names. Your name is above all names. Your name is above all names. Worship the Lord. Your name is above all names. Oh, your name is above all names. Oh, your name is above all names. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. Looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody's greater, nobody's greater, nobody's greater than you. Come on and worship the Lord in here. His name is above all names. Hallelujah, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Hallelujah. That means every sickness has to bow. That means every issue has to bow in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now is not the time for you to stop worshiping him. Now is not the time for you to stop worshiping him. Now is the time for you to open up your mouth and bless his name. Is there a worshiper in the house this morning who know that the Lord is great? Let everything that had breath bless his name. Open up your mouth and give him praise. You've got to open up your mouth and bless his name name. You've got to open up your mouth to get your breakthrough. Is there a worshiper in the house? Is there a worshiper in the house? He searched high. He searched low. He couldn't find anybody. You can do it. I couldn't know it. But the blood Somebody shout the blood. <laughs> Your name is above all names. 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 Your name is above all 
Your name is above all names. Your name is above all names. Yeah, your name is above all names. Oh, your name is above all names. Your name is above all names. Yes, your name is above all names. Oh, your name is above all names. Your name is above all names. Oh, your name is above all names. Oh, Works of your hands. Mighty are the works of our yeah, mighty are the works of your hands. Come on, tell him, mighty are the works of your hands. Oh, mighty are the works of your hands. Yeah, 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 mighty are the works of your hands. Oh, mighty are the works of your hands. I searched all over. I couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. Nobody's greater. Nobody's greater. Nobody's greater than you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and open up your mouth. Come on and open up your mouth in here. Open up your mouth and hear. Come on and give God the fruit of your lips. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A closed mouth cannot get fed. Hallelujah. Open up your mouth and hear. Open up your mouth and hear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and worship the Lord. Come on and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Ha
Aleluya 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 We give you all the glory God Aleluya 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 Gracious God, we, these vessels of clay, come before you even now, bow in our hearts, our minds, bow in our spirits, and lifting up before you our thoughts, our attitudes, our behaviors. Someone said, make us over again. And we thank you for your very presence and reminding us that you are here. Thank you for that song. Thank you for being with us. that you speak to us ever more evident that your word may come forth with power with spirit fluid like water strong like wine filled with the spirit of God in Jesus' name Amen would you put your hands for Sister Briggs? Come on, put your hands. Oh, you can do much better than that. You can celebrate her. Celebrate what God brought among us. Y'all not hearing me this morning. Y'all didn't get it. A few got it. Celebrate what God brought in our midst. Celebrate what God brought. See, you don't understand. You may be seated. Um, this morning, I was literally praying. Sister, thank you so much for that song. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brother David Briggs. Amen. Thank you for your family. And um, thank you. The reason why I'm saying this is because the choir had asked me if I had a sermonic selection, and I said no. And... Um, and someone else asked me if I had a song. I said, no. And the reason, because I thought I was going to really move real fast. But then I was praying this morning. I said, God, um, I'm still searching for someone searching. And all these conversations were playing in my head. And I just said, God, I just threw my hands up. And you know, however you do this, you do this. So I didn't come. So notice I didn't have a... Y'all know, notice that I usually have a pastor's moment and I sing, I would sing a song. And I forgot. I didn't do one this morning. Because God had it planned already. Y'all not hearing me. Okay, y'all just, I'm going to get y'all out so y'all can go eat. God had it planned already. What he was going to do. Amen. So God used you to bless us. I want to say me, but God used us. <laughs> so thank you. And the reason why I, was, I realized what happened is because I had to see something in my head and God told me to step back. And the reason why he was telling me to step back so you could step forward. Amen? Amen. That's a word for you. Um, where is Sister Gwendolyn? Please stand real quickly. Stand up. We have good news from Sister Gwendolyn. God bless you. God is still working on you. Amen. And um, we have a good praise report, and you'll get that. Um, but let's keep her in our prayers. Amen. Amen. Uh, don't sit yet. Don't sit yet. 
But one of the things I want to say, we want to welcome Sister Gwendolyn Stembridge as an official member of Bethel Tabernacle AME Church. We received... Welcome back. We did receive your certificate of transfer. Amen. 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 And so I wanted, I told her originally, I wanted to wait until I get it because that's just the proper protocol Amen. to go through before you can say um, a person is a member of the church. Amen. Amen. So you are now officially, your pastor has sent us the letter and you are now officially a member of the church. Please get your tied in envelope number. I'm just messing. <laughs> no, he didn't. No, he didn't. Oh, she knows. We already had that talk. But I love you and welcome to Bethel. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. And sis, um, praise God. You may be seated. And we, we will keep praying for you. Amen? Um, uh, Sister Vera disappeared. I see Sister Vera somewhere. But everyone else who's in the house, God bless you. Oh, God bless you. Thank you for being in our midst this morning. Um, God is working on you still. Amen? Amen? Put your hands together for this choir this morning. Amen. And these musicians. God bless you. Um, Praise God. Real quickly, turn your Bibles to John chapter 2. Real quickly, this is going to be the fastest sermon you ever heard, um, probably. Um, John chapter 2. John chapter 2. It's continuing in from last week where we had the topic. Y'all remember what the topic was? The rise of what? The Cocoa Pots. Cocoa simply means the tennis player who came out of really um, nowhere, obscurity, thank you, and came all the way to the top, right? And so now we, we are looking at John chapter 2, which I started last week, speaking about the, these water pots that was insignificant, not being used for their purpose, but all of a sudden, Jesus came and he gave them significance. And much of us, many of us, are like these water pots who have skills, talents, abilities. But unless God do something with us. And I said to you at the end of the sermon, I'm going to be real quick. I said to you at the end of that sermon is that unless someone can dip inside of you. Remember, he changed the water from what? into wine and somebody mistakenly thought I was given permission to drink wine last week they came to me and said pastor thank you so much for saying that it's good to drink wine I said I, 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 I never said that for the first time I started stammering in my life I, I never said that what I did say was that he changed the word however I did give you a word last week that most of the gospel of John, 95% of the gospel of John has a word, and that word is double entendre. Y'all remember that? Yes. And double entendre, E-N-T-E-N-D-R-E, double entendre simply means it has a double meaning. He may write one thing, but it has another significant meaning to it. All right? It's like light and darkness. There's two sides to it. And so when you read the gospel of John, it's important for you to try to like look at it from a different perspective than the one that you would normally read it with. It's important. I started telling you that unlike many of the other gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, but John does not start his gospel speaking about a birth narrative. John does not talk about the childhood of Jesus. John does not speak about Herod and Mary. John just basically introduces God on the scene. He wants you to be focused on what's important. Everybody say focus. He wants you to be focused on what he's writing about because you can get carried away with the nuances of reading the Gospels. There is a lot of things that really do not pertain to present contemporary times. And John wants you to be focused on it. That's why he says, in the beginning was the what? Y'all didn't read your Bible. In the beginning was the what? Word. And the word was what? God. 
And the word was what? Okay, y'all read it sometimes. In the beginning, he wants you to know where he's coming from. The reason why he wants you to do that is because he wants you to be totally focused on that word. He wants you to know that he's talking about Jesus. But at the same time, he wants you to the double entendre of it. He wants you to know that he's speaking about God. It's one thing to look at Jesus as the Messiah. But at the same time, he wants you to realize he's talking about God. John is filled with so much symbolism. Symbol of Christ. One time they call him son of David. One time they're calling him Mary's son. And the reason why they're trying to, when you see Mary's son, they're trying to be, um, they're trying to be type of facetious. Because we're coming from a, 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 a type of community that only deals with men. The language of men. And so whenever you see that it's speaking about when a child is referred to by the mother, it's an insult. Because it's written from the perspective of a man. Usually when you read the Bible, it speaks about the, the David's son. It reads about um, Solomon. It speaks about the men. But when you see, it says Mary. They, they're like, yeah, yeah, he's a nobody. And God, God likes when people, God deals with the nobodies. He turns what? Ashes into what? Y'all don't read your Bible. I, I, I see, I knew that. It turns ashes into beauty. And the Bible tells us he turns, he takes the foolish things of this world and does what? Confounds the wise. He takes the, I want you to really think about it for a second. I'm going slow for a reason. He takes the foolish things, the double entendre. How can you take the foolish things and confound the wise? How can you turn ashes Something that is so insignificant. Something that is, should be thrown out. And many of us, people look at us as if we're ashes. Good for nothing. Just having a physical existence. As a matter of fact, some of us act as if life is just a passageway that we're just passing through. We, 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 we. We take the words of people as if they're really um, significant to our lives. People say, you're good for enough. Y'all have heard those things. Talk to me like I'm talking to somebody this morning. I've had people in my life who looked at me and said, you're good for nothing. I had people look at my life and say, you're no good. I'm just talking about me, what they said to me. I've had people who looked at me and says, you know, you, you're just going to become just like your father. A rolling stone that gathers what? No moss. No moss. I never knew what that means to this day. <laughs> that people look at my life and say, you're just going to end up in the dumps. You, you just look at you. And I, when I started growing up, I wish I had the vocabulary, Vanessa, to return those words back to them because now I'm much smarter. I wish you would tell me I was insignificant because it takes one to know the other. I wish you would tell me I was no good because look at you, your own self. I wish. But that's not what God does. God looks at the damaged things and see beauty. And God looks at the things that's cast out and say, I could do much good with you. God looks at the things that society says that it's, it's not worthy. And God says, I will make you worthy. Am I talking to anybody up in here? And that's what happens in John chapter 2. Here's these water pots. But the only time they're good for something is during the time of purifying. When the Jews has to go through the path over. That's the only time they're good for. And it says that the water pots were just in this corner over here. Just waiting to be used. Have you ever felt like that? When people look at your life and just waiting and you're just like, I hope they see me. I hope they recognize me. I hope they know my name. My last name is this. And I hope they and you go up there and say, we don't know you. Who? Who's your father? And you wish 
that it wasn't about your father's name. It, you wish that it wasn't about a sorority. You wish that it wasn't about a fraternity. But you just want people to see that you are this earthen vessel that God has placed some goodness inside of you. And the only person who could say that you're no good is God himself. And God look. When I read Genesis, God says, but everything that he has made, at the end of making it, he pronounced one simple four-letter word. It's good. Oh, I'm talking to somebody up in here. When, when you look at him, when God looks at you, all he sees is what? Good. When God sees you wake up in the morning, he says, that's the beauty of my creation. When you don't feel like you should go one more mile, God says, look at my beauty. You can do it. You can imagine that God is your number one cheerleader. God says, come on, you can do it. Don't matter what they say. They're not the ones who... The problem with a lot of us is that we feel that the people who made us is our family members. The people who made us is our boss. The people who made us is the one that says that we should be qualified. But don't you know that you don't need no qualifications to deal with God? You don't need to go to any seminary. You don't need to know that you could pray from morning until night as long as you recognize that the one who made you is God himself and he is your father. He is your way maker. He is the one who made a way out of no way. You can't tell me I'm not qualified because if God looks at me, he says I am precious in his sight. Y'all know I got five more minutes, right? <laughs> Y'all ain't get this by now, but look look at these water vessels. He looks at these water vessels, and, and Jesus says, Here, here's Mary come over to Jesus. Um, Jesus just shows up to a wedding. Just no intentions to do anything. Watch this, watch this. And John is so smart with this. John does not tell us about any miracles that Jesus has done in the past. Oh, wait for it. John, John does not tell you that um, um, when Jesus got baptized, that he went around healing people. John does not speak of that. Are y'all with me? And John... Does that say, um, afterwards he saw Nathaniel under a tree. And said, Nathaniel, for John just simply says, Jesus was invited to a wedding. His mom was there. And Jesus showed up with the twelve. And then John writes later, later on, John says, this was the first time, pay, pay attention to this. This was the first miracle that Jesus ever did. Okay, I'm going I'm to I'm miss it again. I'm going to try it over again. John, John does not speak about the other miracles that Matthew speaks of. Y'all, the, the gospel of Matthew. John does not speak about the miracles that um, Luke spoke of. He does not speak about the, the miracles that Mark speaks of. Or he says that after changing the water into wine, this is the first miracle. But just before we got to the miracle, Jesus says to his mother, he says, um, she says, Jesus, um, we're out of wine. And in contemporary language, Jesus says, um, that's none of my business. And that, that has nothing to do with me. Uh, we're out of wine. What, what does, watch this, watch this. What does their, their deficiency, what, what does their deficiency have to do with me. Okay, I'll just let me try. I'm, I'm trying to go slow, Reverend Karen. Uh, what, what does your lack, what does, what does you having no money have to do with me? What, what, what does your sickness have to do with me? What, what does you not having enough? What do you mean that he's not qualified? What do you mean that he didn't meet the quota? What do you mean that he didn't show up to church for the last year and he wants to be a leader? What, what does that have to do with me? What does that have to do with me that um, he fell by the wayside 
and now he's trying to do this. What, 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 do you, what does that have to do with me? Have you ever felt that you've been put into a position where um, in spite of a person's deficiency, you're called to take them to another level? <laughs> I got three more minutes. <laughs> And if you don't get it by now, watch this. <laughs> watch this. Um, uh, there's, there's, God will purposely place you um, in the company of people who don't have enough, who feel insignificant, who don't feel as if they can do it, who feel as if they're always broke, who feel as if mentally they can't go one more day. God will always place you about around broken people and they all if, have you ever noticed that somebody always comes up to you and trying to explain their problems to you and you go like why you always come to me i ain't no have you ever been in a place where you just look at your life and every sick person is coming to you about all the problems of their life and everybody you don't even have ten dollars in your name but everybody coming to you can i borrow this can i borrow that can i borrow this i'm gonna give you back next week and next week never show up have you ever noticed that this person said, i got this problem with my husband and then you're wondering wait 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 wait, wait. how did i get into this place have you ever been around some people when everything you're just sitting there minding your own business and they come and sit down and say, listen up here. I'm going through this sickness. I did, this is what I'm dealing with. And you go like, huh, what, what just happened? Have you ever felt like Planet Rock landed on you and you're wondering, how did I get in this position? Hey, watch this, watch this, watch this. Um, I, watch this, watch this. Somebody give me a mic. Watch this. Um, watch this. He, he, Jesus is just sitting there minding his own business. He has no interest. All he wants to do is just eat fried chicken. All he just wants to do is enjoy the wedding like everybody else. That's all he wants to do. And, and his response to his mother, um, no, no, watch this, watch this. His response was, um, this is the, my time. I, 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 and the reason why he responded that way, because um, just like um, it's his human, watch this, please don't miss this, the human side of him is waiting for the right opportunity, Gerard, to respond to when he should begin to do the right thing at the right time. But God will place you around people that they're now, they don't care about the right time for them to begin to do what God intended for you to do. God just wants you that if you're in place, you just be present. And you don't need to wait for the right time for somebody to say, well, I, 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 I should begin being a leader next week. I should begin being a leader by time September. The pastor is going on vacation. So by the time he comes back, that's when I'm being a leader. Is there anybody up in here that knows the right time is like yesterday? Not today, yesterday. But as long as God says that you are my beloved child, that's when you are appointed and anointed to begin the work that you're called to do. And anytime you're around people who can help you, I don't know what's going on with these mics this morning but every single time that you're around somebody you're called to change make a difference in their lives is there anybody around here but when god places you around people the minute they sit beside you you're there to change the water into wine you're there to change the elements of their lives. You're there to make a difference. That's what's happening. You're there to change them. Oi. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I got one and a half minute. Watch this. Watch this. Here's John. John says, um, Jesus says, uh, hey, okay, you know what? Go get, watch this, um, go get the, 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 those water pots over there. 
The water pots should have water in them. I said should have water in them. Um, have you ever asked somebody to pray for you? I'm going to pray for you later. <laughs> I'm talking about myself. I've done it. Um, I mean, you, you just don't know what to say. So you'd be like, um, okay, sister, I, I got you. The Lord be with you. And then, you know, I'll make sure to keep your name in prayer because on Wednesdays at 6 a.m., we do the morning prayer list. The prayer warriors pray at 6 a.m. And we'll call your name in prayer because um, you know that you're inefficient. You know that just like a checking account, when you should have the minimum balance. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Um, um, a Chase Bank, they said the minimum balance that you should keep within the checking account is $1,500. But you know, in the last 12 months, <laughs> you didn't even come close to, uh, to, um, to $1,500. Watch this. I'm trying to make it as real as possible for y'all. Y'all, got, y'all with me? And, and, and then somebody says, yo, um, somebody says, um, hey, uh, Dave, div- um, let me use, let me use Damelia. Um, listen, I'm, I'm really having some, some real bad problems right now, and I need to borrow $600. And you know that all you got in your checking account is 605 <laughs> You're thinking... Watch this. I'm talking about, um, I'm talking about um, the deficiency that you're supposed to feel. But it's not for you. It's for somebody else. Watch this. Watch this. The million knows he has all these bills to pay this week. And, but he knows the person too. Because Jesus knows that in order for the wedding, watch this, in order for the wedding to be efficient, he has to meet the inefficiency. Okay. There, 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 there's some people that you're going to meet. In order for them to get to where they need to be in life, God's going to bring their deficiency. So you can give them something to get them efficient. To get to the next place of where they need to be. But wait, 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 watch this, watch this, watch this. But it's going to look as if that you're losing something. But wait, 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 because here's what John does. Watch this, you got to get me out of here. I feel Baptist at this moment right now. And, but here's what John does. Here's, here's what John does. John goes down a couple of verses and John says, this is the first miracle that Jesus has done since he started his public ministry. And see, Jesus had to do something to get him out of his own comfort zone. Because the next thing that he did was after he realized that he has this power. Because sometimes you got to do something outside of your own comfort zone to realize that you got power. And then when you get power to serve, God is going to take you to the next level. Watch this. Don't miss it. Don't miss your shout. Don't miss your shout. Next thing he knows, Jesus later on in the same chapter, Ken, he goes, he sees that there are some people who's using the temple for the wrong purpose. Mm. They're they're using the house of God for the wrong purpose. (laughs) And there's some people you're going to meet that they're using their bodies for the wrong purpose. (laughs) They're in the wrong place at the wrong time. And you doing things that's not helping them. And if I got all merchants up in my house, (laughs) if they're using the church for the wrong reason, (laughs) if they're using a church that's not going to be a house of prayer, then you're using it for the wrong reason. (laughs) If every single Friday night you end up at the club, (laughs) Saturday you end up at the bar, (laughs) Sunday afternoon, noon you end up at the lounge and all this time you've been drinking you've been hollering and you've been abusing your own self you've been doing the wrong thing at the wrong time you need to God will put some people around you that can say you don't need I understand you go to the club on Fridays I understand you go to the bar on what 
Saturday. But at least find yourself in church on a Sunday morning. Because if you place yourself around some people who can get you to the next level of your life, it will help you deal with the inefficiency and the deficiency. Is there anybody up in here? I got to get out of here. So he goes to the temple and he says he begins to beat all those people who was using the temple for the wrong reason. And that's because the water that was inside of him was changed the moment that he began to help everybody at the wedding. Because sometimes you help other people even when you think that you shouldn't. But because you help them, God's going to empower you to get to the next place. I got to get out of here. Is there anybody up in here that knows the reason why God got you around some people who seem as if they're broken, who seem as if they're ashes, who don't know where they're going. They don't know if they're coming or they're going. They don't know what they're meant for in life. It seems as if they don't know why they woke up this morning. God will place you around those people. Have you ever met, been around anybody who feel as if they don't want to go one more day? They can't do this anymore. They feel as if, why was I born in the first place? And the reason why you got to let them know why they were born in the first place is that you can meet the deficiency in their lives to get them to where God has intended for them to be. Because they would be the same people huh, who go to the temple huh, and say, we got to get this place right. We got to get this life right. We got to get the church right. I got to get my family right. I got to get my life right. And once you get yourself right, what God does in private, God will do it publicly. You're not hearing me. I said, what God does privately, God will do it publicly. Is there anybody up in here on this great Sunday morning just before we get out of here? But say, Lord, work on me privately. Don't let me go public with my messed up self. God, don't let me embarrass you. God, don't let me make a fool of myself. God, work on me privately so that when I go public my mess don't show publicly wait 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 wait, wait. what's this um, the, re the reason why I know half of you are crazy I'm talking about my own family um, is because you don't ask God Oh, let me, let me, let me, grammatically. We don't ask God to work on us privately um, so that we can be, we can make him proud of us publicly. But some of us want to show our dirt pri uh, publicly. And then when we look at you and say, you crazy. You say, you calling me crazy? That's because you never took the time to ask God to work on you privately. Jesus, watch this, watch this, watch this, and I'm done. Jesus, um, turn in the water. Don't miss it. Do you realize he turned the water into wine privately? And because he turned the water into wine privately, he could go clean the temple publicly. <laughs> Y'all not hearing me on this Sunday afternoon, <laughs> but there are some things that before God can place you publicly, <laughs> that he wants you to deal with privately. <laughs> Is there anybody up in this church on this good Sunday can say, Lord, touch me privately. I don't want to be an embarrassment to your name. I don't want to be an embarrassment to my family. I don't want, I should be further. I should be higher. But Lord, 
I am messed up privately. Touch me. Touch me. Touch me. Lord, I don't want to go public. Lord, I don't want to bring shame to your name. Lord, I don't want to bring shame to my family. Lord, is there anybody up in here? But before he can change and before people can get wine out of you, he got to change that water of cleansing into wine. And before you can get served, you got to be served. I say before you can serve, you got to let God serve you. Is there anybody up in here? We got to go. We got to go. But high five your neighbor and said, neighbor, I need a private miracle. I need a private miracle. I need a private miracle for some public display. I need a private healing. I need a private change for a public display. Is there anybody up in here? Stand on your feet. Say, neighbor, touch me so that God can make me relevant. Touch me so that God can look at me and say, I made you. I am proud of you. I am the one who made you the leader. I am the one who made you the head and not the tail. I am the one who's going to make you significant. I am the one who's going to make you relevant. Is there anybody up in here who can high five your neighbor for the last time? Said neighbor, let him touch me. Let him use me. Change me. Change my water. Change my water. Change my water into wine. Let me serve. Change my water. Is there anybody up in here? Can high five your neighbor for the last time? Said neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Let him pray for me. Let him touch me. Neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Will you pray for me? Will you pray for me? Will you pray for me? Not yesterday. Not tomorrow. Now. 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 Pray for me. Don't get out of here. Till you pray for me. Pray for me. Now. Now. I want my change. When? Now. Now. I want it. Get it. Get it. Get your change. Get your change. Now. Everybody standing. Say, 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 get it. Here's your takeaway. Here's your takeaway. Stop working on things publicly, but you should be doing privately. Hear me out. Stop working on your public mess of a self when you should be working on it privately. And let God bring it, bring you publicly. The double entendre of life is that
that people will look at you and see one thing and God sees another. People saw water, God sees wine. (laughs) Oh, they poured water in it. (laughs) Privately. Public public display of servant is they tasted what? I want you to grab the hands of the person. Just grab a hand. You should be holding somebody's hand. You see that hand that you're holding? They got some water inside of them that's intended for one purpose. But God has another. God wants to take it to another level. And the craziness that they're facing, you probably don't even know. God wants to change it into something that everybody can taste. That can change the atmosphere. Private, working, public display. It's not the other way. You shouldn't be working in public what you should be working on in private. I want you to just squeeze the hand of that person just a little bit and just say a prayer. Just any prayer that comes to your mind, just say a prayer for them. Here's a good prayer. Just a suggestion. Father, whatever this person needs privately, touch them even now. Before this service ends. And transform the liquid that should be cleansing them into the liquid of life. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you walk into this house today, this church, the sanctuary, and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, this is a phenomenal opportunity for you to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord says, if a man should confess, man, not genre specific, but if one should confess with their mouth and believe with their mouth, heart that Jesus died for them that Jesus was raised and really believe it you shall be saved and all you need all you need is is a tidbit of faith to really know that it really happened if you never prayed that prayer I want you to come I want you to come so you can have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ this is this is bigger than anything else that you'll ever do in life. Bigger than anyone saying anything about you. Bigger than the messed up ashes you've seen and the messed up mistakes you've made. Bigger. Can I, can I be honest with you? God does not care about the mistakes you've made because he knows that you're so much more. What he cares about is your acknowledgement of him. Because he's the corrector of mistakes. Nobody has the right to put the benediction on your life. Nobody has the right to put the benediction on your life. You give people power to do that. You authorize people to do that. I give you back the power to retake that and take the power that you've given away and let it be yours. Protect it with all of your might. So this is the power that God has given me 
He says this of me. He says that of me. And nobody has the right to put a benediction on your life. Nobody. We got to go. Let's pray. If you don't have a church home, we welcome you to this house. There's ministers that will be waiting for you. We pray you'll come again. And we love you. Gracious God, we thank you for this word. The rise of the water pass, moving from significant, insignificant to significant. Moving from deficiency to being filled, fulfilled. Thank you for this service today. In the very many ways you spoke to each and every single one of us. Thank you that your word spoke to us. Now as we go to our various homes, be with us. Strengthen us and let the word find deep root. Keep the enemy from stealing this word. Let the people go over it in their hearts and minds. Let them go deep into it. Let it bother them. Let them grow from it. Let them succeed from it. In Jesus' name we pray. Church says amen. amen. Thank you for coming out. We look forward to seeing you next week. God bless you. Next week we'll have a visiting preacher. And the next one after that, also no, next one after that is in house. But God bless you. We love you. Let's all sing our closing doxology. cocoa, water jars. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his throne. To the great and the almighty God who rules in all dominion, honor and power. Who looks over you and you're going out and you're coming in to keep you in all of your ways from this time forth and forevermore. And the church sings Bless 